Hi folks, Brian Reed here with Firewalls.com. In this video I'm going to walk you through how to set up uh, two WAN ISP connections on the firewall and then balance the traffic between those connections for both uh, spillover of data or for failover in case your primary ISP goes offline uh, the secondary uh, WAN ISP connection will come online. So the first thing we have to do is we need to set up the WAN interfaces. So if we go into network interfaces you'll see we already have X1 set up as a WAN interface and for demonstration we call this uh, uh, the Comcast uh, cable connection. Now we need to go ahead and set up our secondary WAN connection so I'm going to take X3, which is an available interface, and I'm going to plug that into our Verizon DSL connection. And then we need to go ahead and tell the SonicWall about this connection. So first, the zone. We have to tell it that it's oh, part of the WAN zone. For demonstration, we're going to say that our Verizon connection is DHCP and then we're going to give it uh, a name here okay next we're going to say okay okay so now we have our two WAN interfaces X1 and X3 for our Comcast and for our DSL now we're going to go ahead and move into the WAN failover and load balancing section For this demonstration, we're using the SonicWall NSA2400, which it's a model that supports up to four ISP connections. Now, depending on which model you have, you may have a minimum of two, and some will go up as high as eight. Okay, so in this scenario, the SonicWall already knows our primary WAN interface is the X1, which for the demonstration is to Comcast. Now we're going to tell it our WAN 2 connection is on the X3 interface, which is our DSL connection to Verizon. Next, we need to decide how we want to do load balancing or failover for these two interfaces. We have four different options available. We have the basic active-passive failover which basically means that all the data is going to flow through our primary WAN ISP connection and if it fails then we're going to um, fail over to the secondary connection in our case the DSL and then when the primary comes back online we're going to go ahead and fail back to the primary WAN address second option is a per destination round robin. In the round robin we can load balance the outgoing traffic based off of the destination. So for example we could uh, build a rule within the firewall that says okay any HTTP traffic we want it to go through WAN2. Uh, any voice over IP traffic, we want it to go through our primary WAN connection. There are several different scenarios where that can come into play. Depending on what your, your requirements are, uh, it's, it's very flexible. Third option is called spillover. And what this means is we can tell the sonic wall, okay, once we use a certain percentage of our primary WAN connection, go ahead and start uh, sending data out over our secondary WAN interface. And this is helpful when you want to make sure that you have a certain amount of available bandwidth on your primary WAN connection, whether it's because you're running uh, voice over IP or you're hosting websites or email servers or you know whichever the case may be where you really want to make sure that you have the available bandwidth available. Finally, the fourth option is percentage-based. 
And what this does is this allows you to tell the Sonic Well once again of all your traffic that you have that's flowing in and out of the network, how much of it goes over your primary and how much of it will go over your secondary. So for this demonstration, we're just going to go ahead and select the basic active passive failover. And we'll leave the default setting of preempt and fail back when the primary uh, ISP comes back online. Next, you want to identify the WAN interface monitoring. This is where we tell the Sonic Wall, okay, here's what you need to do to make sure that our WAN connection is either up or down. Here's how to test for it. So the first part is we want to tell it how often to check the interface. And this is a default setting of the Sonic Wall of five seconds. Depending on your case, you can modify it either way. Then we tell it, okay, if it's failed the test, how many times does it have to fail that test before we fail over? Once again, the default setting is three. So now we're telling it, okay, within 15 seconds of our primary WAN connection going offline, it's going to go ahead and deactivate that interface and begin using the secondary interface. And then finally, we tell the Sonic Wall, okay, after doing three successful tests at five seconds apiece, so within another 15 seconds, if it is up and running, then it will go ahead and switch back over to the primary WAN internet connection. Okay, now we want to set up the logical probe. And what the probe is, this is how we, te this is how we tell Sonic Wall how to go out and check and see if that connection really is uh, up and running or not. There's a very nice feature called the probe responder. What this is, this is basically Sonic Wall has equipment out there at global.sonicwall.com that is always up. I mean, it's a, it's on a high availability network uh, that you know it should never uh, not be there. It should never not respond to um, our probe of the server. So we're going to go ahead and um, uncheck that for now, just to kind of walk you through the other probing options. So for our primary WAN, we can tell it um, how to determine whether it succeeded or not. So for example, we can say the probe succeeds when either the main or the alternate target responds, which is kind of typical. And then what we do is we tell it, okay, here are two IP addresses to go ping on our main uh, WAN interface to see if they're working. Typically, you would use, for example, the IP address of the default uh, router sitting in front of the firewall. That way, it, it can test in between your firewall and the router whether that's up, and, up or down. An alternate target could possibly be you know, an IP address that's way out there on the Internet, uh, some other ISP, um, or you know, Sonic Wall's um, responder probe. Uh, depending, you know, you can choose where you want to go with that. The further out and the more reliable that uh, remote host or target is, the better this, this feature is going to work for you. And of course, you have another option where you can use TCP instead of a ping packet. So, for example, you could put in there, you know, check the HTTP port, port 80, of a web server. Uh, this can be pretty handy when you... Uh, set it up and point it to google.com. Uh, very seldom does Google's um, you know, main homepage, www.google.com, ever go offline. So that's a pretty steady uh, remote uh, target or host that we could look at to, just to make sure that, that our connection's up and running. And then you would set it up uh, also for your secondary uh, same way you did the primary for it to check for um, whether you know that internet connection is up and running and working. 
And then finally, the last selection, after everything is up and running, there's a great little uh, st uh, statistic section that you can look at under the WAN failover load balancing section that tells you exactly what's happening, tells you whether your probes are responding, how many connections, uh, percentage. So you can use this to go back and fine tune uh, the different methods that you're using for the WAN failover. Okay, uh, hopefully uh, you were able to get some value out of this video. I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Uh, we do have uh, sales and technical engineers here at firewalls.com that can answer any additional questions uh, or even you know demonstrate some more in depth whether you want to see you know three WAN interfaces or a different uh, method of of uh, failover that's available. Okay, thank you very much and have a great day.